and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I'm going to talk to you about 20 idioms which have different versions in American English and in British English. You need to be really careful with these because you risk being misunderstood if you use the wrong version in the wrong country. Well actually that would mean you would be understood because that's a double negative. Anyway, I'm going to tell you the British version of the idiom and then I'm going to tell you the American version of the idiom. I'm going to give you the definition and I'm going to give you an example. So get your notebooks out and write these down. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video. It is Skillshare. They are an online learning community with thousands of classes of all different topics. You can learn about marketing, languages, cooking, craft skills, honestly the world is your oyster. There are loads of free classes and you can also sign up for premium membership. And that gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I love cooking. I'm always posting about what I cook on my stories and there are some amazing cooking classes on there. I think I'm actually addicted to both watching cooking classes and cooking. It might actually be a problem, but it's not a problem for my fiance. But to find out more, you'll have to sign up to Skillshare and it's actually really affordable. Way more affordable than most other learning platforms. An annual subscription is under $10 per month. And since Skillshare are sponsoring this video, they have given the first 500 people who click the link in the description box their first two months for free. So click on the link, sign up and claim your free two month membership. And really there are so many English courses and language courses and things that you will genuinely be interested in. And most importantly, let me know how it goes. Right, let's get on with the lesson. Now, I have curated a list of 20 idioms which mean the same things but have different versions in British English and American English. They are all fairly common and you can use most of them in everyday conversation and your homework for today is to write in the comments any other idioms that you know that might be different in different countries and different parts of the world. Right, number one. In Britain, we say to throw a spanner in the works. To throw a spanner in the works. But in American English, they say to throw a monkey wrench in the works or sometimes just to throw a wrench in the works. It's basically different because what Americans call a monkey wrench, we call a spanner. And this idiom basically means to do something that prevents a plan or activity from succeeding. For example, the intern threw a spanner in the works by ghosting the client on Tinder. This actually happened to someone I know. They uh, met someone on Tinder, never replied to their messages and uh, it turns out they're a big client for their company. It didn't go well. They threw a spanner in the works. Number two, as we say in British English, to blow your own trumpet, to blow your own trumpet. But in American English, they say to toot your own horn to toot your own horn. This means to boast or to praise your own abilities and achievements. For example, I don't mean to blow my own trumpet, but I read the Oxford Dictionary three times before the age of five. That is a lie, I did not. Number three. In Britain, we say to sweep something under the carpet. To sweep something under the carpet. But in America, they say to sweep something under the rug to sweep something under the rug. This means to deny or ignore something that is embarrassing or might damage your reputation. A lot of politicians like to sweep things under the carpet. For example, as one of the most controversial YouTubers on the platform, I have swept many scandals under the carpet. Number four, in British English, we say peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. But in American English, they say peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. This means to avoid something at all costs or to refuse to associate with something. Whoops, I said the wrong one. This is the mixture of good and bad things in life. For example, having lovely sponsors like Skillshare helps my business through the peaks and troughs of the year. Number five. In Britain, we would say to not touch something with a barge pole to not touch something with a barge pole. In American English, they would simply say to not touch something with a 10-foot pole, to not touch something with a 10-foot pole. 
This simply means to avoid something at all costs or to refuse to associate with something. For example, my father would not touch trifle with a barge pole. He absolutely hates trifle. He's very good at pretending to like things, but I've never seen him pretend to like a trifle. It's that dessert, which is like cake, jam, jelly, custard, cream. Oh, I would eat it, but I wouldn't choose it. Right, number six. This is a sort of superstitious one. In British English, it's touch wood, touch wood. In American English, it's knock on wood, knock on wood. And it's a phrase that's used just after mentioning a way in which you've been lucky in the past. And it's said to prevent bad luck. So an example would be, I am not a great driver, but I've never been in a serious car crash. Touch wood. I'm saying touch wood to prevent myself from being in a serious car crash. I actually need to touch wood now. Okay. Uh, I'm not superstitious, I just, I'm just British. Number seven. British English, we would say to flog a dead horse, to flog a dead horse. In American English, they would say to beat a dead horse, to beat a dead horse. This simply means to waste energy on something that has no chance of succeeding. For example, you're flogging a dead horse by trying to make my dad eat trifle. He's not going to do it. You're not going to succeed. Number eight. Now I will admit that sometimes I use the American version and you do have to bear that in mind with these idioms because in Britain we consume so many American sitcoms, TV programs and movies that their vocabulary does bleed into our vocabulary. But in Britain, traditionally, we would say to take something with a grain of salt. To take something with a grain of salt. When in America, they would say to take something with a pinch of salt to take something with a pinch of salt. And this means to view something with skepticism or to not take something literally. For example, if I offer you a tequila, you should take it with a pinch of salt and a slice of lemon. Just joking, that's proof that you should take everything I say with a grain of salt. Number nine, in British English, we would say swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. In American English, they would simply say ups and downs, ups and downs. These idioms are used to describe situations where there are as many gains as there are losses. For example, in the UK, we pay high taxes, but it's all swings and roundabouts because we have a great national health service. Number 10, another one where I might actually say the American one um, because the Americanisms have bled into Britain. <laughs> um, but the British idiom is skeletons in the cupboard, skeletons in the cupboard, whilst in American English they say skeletons in the closet, skeletons in the closet. And we don't actually use the word closet, which means wardrobe in British English, um, but I would use the word closet for the specific idiom. And a skeleton in the closet is a secret that would cause embarrassment if known. For example, I could never run for Prime Minister because I have far too many skeletons in my closet. Number 11. Oh, this one is so British. The British version is so British. To have a go at someone. To have a go at someone. We use this all the time. If there's one that you remember, remember this one. The American version is to tear into someone. To tear into someone. It means to attack someone with either force or language. For example, True story, a teacher once had a go at me for faking an illness when I was genuinely very unwell. Number 12. In British English, we say a storm in a teacup. A storm in a teacup. In American English, they say a tempest in a teapot. A tempest in a teapot. That sounds much more posh. Teacup, teapot, much more tea. This means great outrage or excitement over a trivial matter. For example, I don't think the apocalypse is coming. I think it's a big old storm in a teacup. Number 13. In British English, we say a drop in the ocean, a drop in the ocean. And in American English, they say a drop in the bucket, a drop in the bucket. It means a very small or insignificant amount compared to the amount needed. For example, I saved 33 pence by doing my shopping online, which is a drop in the ocean compared to what I need to save for a house deposit. 
that's what I'm trying to say for at the moment and it's not easy. Number 14, this is a personal favourite. I just really like it and I actually love the American version but saying it makes me cringe. The British version is hard cheese. Hard cheese. The American version, and I find it very, very hard to say this without sounding so ridiculous. So bear with me. The American version is tough titty. <laughs> tough titty. <laughs> I wonder if I can say it without smiling. Tough titty. <laughs> no, I can't. This is used to express somewhat sarcastic sympathy over a petty or trivial matter. For example, you missed your exam because you stayed up watching Bird Box. Hard cheese, mate. Number 15. Ooh, another super British one that we use so frequently. To bang on about something. To bang on about something. In American English, they would say to rant and rave about something. To rant and rave about something. This means to talk about something for a long time, especially in a way that is boring to others. For example, I know I bang on about Skillshare, but it really is a fantastic service. Number 16. In British English, it's to call a spade a spade. To call a spade a spade. In American English, to call it as one sees it. To call it as one sees it. This simply means to speak honestly and describe something as it really is. For example, my mother calls a spade a spade. If I'm being out of order, which I sometimes am, she will put me right. And she always does. Number 17. In British English, we say to cram. To cram. Which isn't strictly an idiom, but the American version is. In American English, they say to hit the books. To hit the books. And this means to study intensively over a short period of time, usually right before an exam. For example, I relied heavily on cramming throughout my university degree. I wouldn't recommend it, but I did get a first class degree. So make of that what you will. Number 18. In British English, to get itchy feet. To get itchy feet. In American English, they say to seek new pastures. To seek new pastures. This means to start to want to travel or to do something different with your life. For example, after 14 years of schooling, I got itchy feet and started to plan my move to Spain. Number 19. In British English, we say to go pear-shaped to go pear-shaped. In American English, they say to go south, to go south. This means to go wrong or to go badly. For example, the party was great, but after they handed out tequila shots, it started to go a bit pear-shaped. Our final idiom of the lesson, and I've saved the best till last, because this is what I love to do. In British English, we say to queue up, to queue up. But in American English, they say to wait in line, to wait in line. It simply means to take one's place in a queue. For example, as a Brit, I can honestly say there is nothing I enjoy more than queuing up and silently judging those who try to break the queue rules. Oh, I love it and hate it at the same time. Anyway, moving on. That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to check out Skillshare. Remember the first 500 people get their first two months free. Just click on the link in the description. And don't forget to check out all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram, and I've got my Twitter. And I shall see you soon for another lesson. Mwah. And since Skillshare are sponsoring this video, they have given the first 500 people to link for the click. Things you will genuinely be interested in. Oh, I'm going to use the word cur curated. Now, I have curated a list of, oh god, that was so good, curated. <laughs> I love that word, curated. Now, I have curated, oh, I, love that. I just love the word. Now, I've created, no, I haven't created it, I've curated. <laughs> Damn it, I really want to use this word. For a, no, that's wrong, that is wrong. This simply means to refuse to associate with and it's a phrase that's you oh my god. My neck is so itchy. These phrases are used to describe a situation where there are but it's all swings and roundabouts because we have a great NHS. I bet. To get itchy feet. 
and don't forget to check me out on check me out check me out